right, and we're back. This time, we're moving from the upper limb to the thorax and the bony landmarks that are palpable on the thorax. I'm sure we all remember, we've got the acromion of the shoulder blade right here. As we go medially and anteriorly, we run into this nice, easily palpable bone right here, the clavicle, or the collarbone. Clavicle is coming from the acromion all the way back to the sternum. And the upper part of the sternum is properly called the manubrium. And the sternal body itself is the bone that extends inferiorly from the manubrium. And this little point where they come together, it's not real obvious here, but you can see sometimes a very remarked little angle there. That's called the sternal angle. That's where the manubrium and the sternum come together. At the very base of the sternum, you have a calcified, sometimes ossified structure called the xiphoid or the xiphoid process. And extending laterally, we have these coastal cartilages. And at the very bottom, they form this kind of, kind of a shelf coming down this way. That is the coastal margin, the inferior aspect of the ribs coming down anteriorly, laterally, and then the cartilage gives way to actual calcified bone right there. All right, we're back with our buddy Ashley here to look at palpable bony landmarks on the thorax. So from the acromion, very easy to just go immediately and follow the clavicle. Easily palpable. Right here we get to its junction with the manubrium. So right here, the manubrium is the upper bone, bridging the two clavicles right there. As you go down, you can feel, usually you not see, but you can feel a little rise right there. That is where the manubrium and the sternum meet. And right here, the sternum itself is the landmark that you can palpate just on the anterior aspect of the chest. Right about here, you can palpate up and find the xiphoid process. That's that little bit of cartilage or sometimes bone sticking down. And laterally, I'm going to palpate and you can often see, but you can palpate the margin right here, this coastal margin. That's where the coastal cartilages come down, across, and back up, and meet up with the ribs around the mid axillary line right here. So, coastal margin, xiphoid, sternum, manubrium, clavicle. We are looking at palpable and clinically important landmarks related to the abdomen and the pelvis. Now, in the abdomen, obviously, there's not too many bones that we need to be concerned about. But in the front, there are some clinically important structures that we need to be aware of. First and foremost is the umbilicus, a.k.a. the belly button. I don't think anything more needs to be said about that. Now, when we're describing abdominal pain or the location of abdominal organs, clinicians use two different kind of nomenclatures to make that make sense. One divides the abdomen into quadrants, and you have a left upper, right upper, right lower, and left lower quadrant. So if you can just picture a grid going through the abdomen with two lines, that is going to be how we describe the quadrants. The next one breaks the abdomen into nine groups. The easiest way to conceptualize that is instead of quadrants, we're going to draw a tic-tac-toe board across the abdomen. So two lines here, two lines coming down, and the umbilicus is in the center square. So the center square is the umbilical region. As we move up here to the top, we've got the left hypochondriac, Hypochondriac translates to under the cartilage. So if you remember that coastal margin right here, here's the left hypochondriac, then the epigastric above the stomach, and then the right hypochondriac region. Moving down, we have a umbilical region in the center. We have the left lumbar, a right lumbar region. And moving down to the final line, we have the left inguinal, the right inguinal, and the hypogastric region. Hypogastric meaning underneath the stomach. So those are the nine regions of the abdomen. Know those, and also know the four quadrants. All right, we'll move on to some of the bony landmarks. And generally, there's obviously not any real palpable bony landmarks associated with the abdomen until we get down all the way to the pubic bone and the pubic tubercles, which are the two pronounced extensions anteriorly of the pubis. And we further the skeleton posteriorly, on the back, there's actually very easily palpable lumbar spinous processes of the vertebra. And even though there's muscle of the erector spinae covering it, it's very readily, you know, you're readily able to palpate the lumbar transverse processes here as well. As we move down, we're going to pass these two large bumps of the pelvic bone that we're going to look at in the next section. And just medial to that, we have the sacral base. And coming around the inferior angle, we have the inferior lateral angle. ILA, inferior lateral angle of the sacrum right there. And we'll be taking a look at those on the person right now. Right, now when we're looking at the bony prominences associated with the pelvis, you need to be a little bit sensitive with your partner. So as you're working, to find the pubic vertical, you're going to have side of your hand, thumb out. So you're just going to palpate down, pushing in, feeling muscle, 
going until you get to the actual bony prominence right there. So working to find the pubic tubercle that way. Okay, go ahead and rotate around. The lumbar spinous processes are right on the midline coming down through the lordosis right there. If you're having trouble palpating this, you can have your partner flex forward and palpate the spinous processes going down the midline of the back. Oftentimes, you can also palpate the lumbar transverse processes just about an inch or two off the midline. Feel for those. You may have to have your partner relax, but you can palpate the transverse processes on either side as well. Go ahead and stand back up. Now, as you palpate down, you're going to find two pronounced bony prominences on either side. We'll cover those in the lower limb in just a moment. They're part of the ilium. On the midline, there's going to be a little drop, and that's where your sacral base is located. So the sacral base is right under here. And the inferior lateral angle of the sacrum is palpable. You need to get your fingers fairly deep into the gluteal region. We're not going to demonstrate that here today, but you can look forward to that in your OPP class coming up very soon.